The Texas Tech football team was back in action and hoping for another victory in the Hub City as they head into the final stretch of the 2022 season. Coming up, we'll have the details on the Red Raiders showdown with Kansas. The Veterans Day was celebrated throughout the United States last Friday and Texas Tech was no exception. Find out how the campus hosted several events to bring attention to the service and sacrifice made by those in the armed forces. And members of the tech community had the chance to put on their dancing shoes and head out to the sub for a swinging time last week. Find out how two band-based student organizations jazzed up a cold November night and raised some money for a good cause. This is the MCTV Weekday Update. Welcome to the Monday edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. I'm Kylie Phillips. And I'm Austin Garrison. The Texas Tech football team returned to Jones AT&T Stadium over the weekend in hopes of securing a win in front of a home crowd. But the team also had other motives as they continued to work towards the bowl eligibility. On Saturday night, the Red Raiders took on the Kansas Jayhawks in a chilly showdown here in the Hub City. Uh, the biggest question of the night was answered on the opening drive as Tyler Shuck started as quarterback for Texas Tech. Shuck went on to throw for 246 yards on 20 completions, along with the 76 yards on the ground. Shuck also threw for a touchdown and ran one himself. Shuck's 76 yard, no, rushing yards contributed to a total of 246 yards on the ground for the Red Raiders. In total, Tech had four different players with more than 50 rushing yards, including Sir Roderick Thompson, Cameron Valdez, Tosh Brooks, and Donovan Smith. The change in offensive strategy was a big part of the Red Raiders' success on Saturday as they went on to win against the Jayhawks 42-28. The victory improves the Red Raiders' record to 3-4 and four in conference and 5-5 five and five overall. Tech is now just one win away from bowl eligibility, an accomplishment some people didn't think would be possible in head coach Joey McGuire's first season. Tech has two games left on the schedule, including what would be their best chances at victory this weekend on the road. The Red Raiders will head north to take on the Iowa State Cyclones in Ames. The Cyclones have a, had a down year, winning only one conference game this season. Even though Iowa State hasn't been as good as hoped this year, the Cyclones have lost by one touchdown or less in all but two games. Tech versus Iowa State is scheduled for 6 p.m. this Saturday with TV coverage on FS1. Saturday's matchup with Kansas was also this year's Celebrate America game at the Jones. The annual celebration honors the many people who have served in the United States Armed Forces. But one day earlier, the Texas Tech campus also took time to honor America's finest during several Veterans Day events. On Friday afternoon, Texas Tech held a groundbreaking at Memorial Circle to mark the beginning of construction of two new projects. A veterans tribute walk and a wall of honor will be two new additions to the existing fountains in the middle of Memorial Circle. During the ceremony, leaders from the Texas Tech University system, along with several veterans, addressed the crowd about the importance of the new additions. The construction will add a brick walkway on the east side of the fountains that will include the names of members of the tech community who served in the military. The Wall of Honor will include bronze plaques on the inside of the fountains featuring 10 honorees who were killed in action or were distinguished on the battlefield. Friday's ceremony concluded with a ceremonial groundbreaking along with the signing of the silver-plated shovel to commemorate the occasion. Construction on the project is expected to start by early spring. Directly following Friday's groundbreaking, many attendees headed over to the Allen Theater in the sub to hear the story of a Texas Tech alumnus who is now one of the highest ranked members of the U.S. military. Air Force General C.Q. Brown Jr. sat down with President Lawrence Skovanek on a stage Friday to talk about his time from graduating at Texas Tech to becoming Chief of Staff for the U.S. Air Force. As Chief of Staff, Brown is responsible for the organization, training, and equipping of more than 680,000 active duty, guard, reserve, and civilian forces around the world. Brown graduated from Texas Tech in 1984 and was part of the Air Force ROTC program. Brown then went on to serve in the military various roles over the past 38 years. Along with military honors, Brown was named a Texas Tech Distinguished Alumnus in 2012. And Friday's visit was the first time Brown had returned to campus since being named Air Force Chief of Staff in 2020. Last week's special event was held in observation of Veterans Day, but it was also the final event scheduled for the 2022 Rawls College of Business Diversity Symposium. 
With the Thanksgiving break just over a week away, many campus groups are hosting their final events of the semester. And last week, two student organizations finished off their fall calendar with a chance for the tech community to dance the night away. Kappa Kappa Psi and Tau Beta Sigma hosted a swing dance in the sub ballroom last Friday night. The event featured a night of dancing, jazz music, and even a raffle to win prizes. Friday's swing dance started off with dance lessons at 6.30 p.m., followed by the full dance at 7. Tickets for the event were $5 for students, faculty, and veterans, and $10 for general entry, with all proceeds benefiting the Cancer Blows organization. But group members also say that the event helps raise awareness of their organization. So this is one of our main public events for the year, um, but we have several social events and recruitment events throughout the fall semester um, to get people excited about Kappa Kappa Psi. Kappa Kappa Psi and Tau Beta Sigma are both honorary service and leadership organizations for college and university band programs around the country. The groups here on campus include students in the Tech School of Music and each organization has been a part of the tech community for more than 80 years. The first full weekend of fall conditions finally made its way to the South Plains over the last three days, capped off by the first freeze of fall. Temperatures dropped to 32 degrees at the official reporting station at the airport for the first time at 8.32 on Friday night. Friday night's freeze was only the beginning of a frigid weekend, with lows falling into the 20s each night and highs staying below 60. So will the colder temperatures conditions stick around as the countdown to the Thanksgiving holiday begins? Let's take a look at the MCTV forecast. The MCTV tower cam is showing a mix of sunshine and clouds today, but the clouds have been moving through quickly due to a return of high winds. Wind speeds have been staying steady around the 20 to 30 mile per hour mark, and that has led to the wind chill staying at or below freezing throughout the day. Highs have already climbed into the 40s this afternoon, but it won't get much warmer, but the clouds should clear out around sunset. Tonight, the winds should die down, but the lack of clouds should lead to a quick drop in overnight temperatures. Lows should fall into the 20s before midnight, but after that, they are forecast to drop even further into the low 20s before sunrise on Tuesday. The plunge in temperatures will lead to a very cold start tomorrow, with temps expected to stay in the mild 30s until mid-morning. Tomorrow's chilly start means another cold afternoon here on campus. Highs could climb up into the upper 40s in the late afternoon, but breezy winds will continue to make it even feel cooler. The clouds will also make another return in the late morning, but otherwise it will be mostly sunny. Sub-freezing lows will continue into Tuesday night, but temperatures should only drop into the upper 20s. The increase in temps will lead to a slightly warmer start to the day on Wednesday, but highs will once again stay below 50. On Thursday, temperatures are expected to top the 50 degree mark, but higher wind speeds will once again make it feel like the 40s. Overnight lows are also expected to decrease throughout the week. Students heading to 8 a.m. classes can expect a sub-freezing commute to class from now through Friday. Looking ahead, freezing morning temperatures won't be the only issue this week, with another drop in highs Friday. But it looks like a slight warm-up may be on the way as we head into Thanksgiving week. As we mentioned earlier, the Texas Tech football team made their way back in the win column over the weekend, overcoming a two-game losing streak. But another Red Raider team was also in action on Saturday, hoping to end a skid that had already reached seven losses. Texas Tech Volleyball headed to Ames, Iowa on Saturday afternoon to take on Iowa State. The Red Raiders were hoping to avenge a loss on their home court back in October when the Cyclones beat Tech three sets to zero. Unfortunately, the Red Raiders didn't have much better luck in the rematch, losing Saturday's game three sets to one. Super senior Carrington Jones put up 12 kills on 16 attempts with two blocks to lead the team. Senior Kenna Sauer and junior Reese Rhodes each had double doubles with Sauer racking up 19 kills and 10 digs, and Rhodes contributed contributing 47 assists and 10 digs. Brooke Canis also added nine kills to her career total, moving her up to fifth on the list in school history with 1,085 kills. But regardless of the team's efforts, Tech still came up short and extended their losing streak to eight. The Red Raiders' next chance to find victory will happen on their home court as they return to the USA on Saturday to face West Virginia. First serve is set for 1 p.m. and you can watch it on ESPN+. The Texas Tech men's and women's basketball team both had great starts last week, opening up with the season with victory at the United Supermarkets Arena. The action on the hard word at home continues this week with three chances to catch the Red Raiders and Lady Raiders in person before the Thanksgiving break. 
First up, the men will head back to the U.S. A tonight to meet up with Louisiana Tech. Law Tech is uh, led by first-year head coach Talvin Hester. Hester spent last season as an assistant coach for the Red Raiders, helping lead Texas Tech to an appearance in the Sweet 16. Tonight's matchup sets up an interesting storyline, with Hester taking on his former team and previous box, Mark Adams. Texas Tech versus Louisiana Tech is scheduled for a 7 p.m. start tonight. If you can't make it out to the arena, you can also catch all the action on ESPN+. Once the men finish up tonight, the women will take over the home court with back-to-back -back action on Tuesday and Wednesday. Tomorrow, the Lady Raiders will meet up with the Jackson State Tigers at 7 p.m. The Tigers' season started last week with two losses against Division I teams, and Tech hopes to stretch that streak to three. Then on Wednesday, former Big 12 rival Colorado comes to town for the Lady Raiders' first real test this season. The Buffs won their first two games to open the season, with the most recent win coming against Tuesday's opponent, Jackson State. Tech will face Colorado for the first time since the Buffs left the Big 12 Conference back in 2006. That matchup happened to be the last game on the Lady Raiders' schedule, ending with a 71-67 loss. Tip-off for Wednesday's game is set for 7 p.m. with TV coverage on Big 12 now on ESPN+. So, Austin, are you planning to check out any of the games at the USA this week? I don't believe so. I think it's too chilly. How about you? I'm planning on going to tonight's game. Oh, that's incredible. I hope you have fun. Thank you. That's all for the today's edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. Thanks so much for joining us, and be sure to check TTUHub.net every day for more news. We'll see you on Thursday.